We've talked about connecting your camera to your computer with the $100 Elgato Cam Link and the $300 Blackmagic ATEM Mini. But what if you could connect your camera to your computer for free using just the USB cable that came with it? Well, US better believe that's what we're talking about today. This video is gonna focus on the Canon EOS webcam utility, but it's important to note that other manufacturers like Sony, Nikon, and I think maybe even Panasonic have also released similar applications. So what I'm gonna do is collect all of the ones I can find and put the links to them in the description. So if you're not using a Canon camera, you can still find the resources that you need. So we'll start off by covering the installation process and then after that, I'll dive into what is so great about this and the scenarios where you still might wanna stick with a more traditional capture card. Oh, and do you know what spiders use for streaming? Webcams. Now, as I said, there's a direct link in the description, but you can find this just by simply Googling Canon webcam utility and it'll pop up as like the first option. So once you select your operating system, you just scroll down to where it says, select your model. And you can see right on the website which applications the webcam utility is compatible with. And there's also the list of camera models right here, both EOS cameras and power shots. So this is quite an extensive list. And truthfully, I don't think it really matters which camera you select. So if you have multiple Canon cameras that you wanna use with this, you don't need to reinstall it separately for each model. I don't really know exactly why they have you select this, but they do. So I'm just gonna pick the EOS R because that's my main camera. One thing to be aware of though, if your camera's not on this list, go ahead and give it a try anyway, because the worst thing that will happen is nothing. And the best thing that could happen is it's actually possible to use your camera that's not supported officially as a webcam, which is kind of amazing. Now, right now I'm running Big Sur on my Mac and apparently it says there's no software for that version, but if I go to Catalina, then it pops up. Once you see the list of software, you just select EOS Webcam Utility, select it. You do need to enter in your info and then I can just click the download button, which will download a zip file. Once it's downloaded, you just open up the installation package and it will run you through the installation process. You will need to restart your computer before it kicks in. Once it's installed, it will just show up as a source. So right here, I've got Ecamm open and you can see EOS Webcam Utility. I don't have a camera connected. It is important to make sure you're running the most recent version of whatever software you're using. For example, in my case, it wasn't working with Zoom until I updated Zoom to a more recent version. I didn't realize there had been an update and then it worked fine. So if you don't have the most recent version, you can't use the Canon EOS Webcam Utility sometimes. The thing that makes me the most excited for this is it can really breathe new life into older cameras. And I think this is important because a lot of people do have either a camera that you don't think will work as a webcam or maybe just an older camera that just sort of been sitting on a shelf for a while, especially a lot of the older Canon Rebels. You know, a lot of people start with those and then upgrade to something else. And now that Rebel's just sort of sitting there, possibly even with like a nifty 50 1.8 lens, that would be an amazing webcam, and now you can just set it up as a dedicated webcam. So I love that this breathes a lot of new life and kind of adds new features to existing cameras. So for example, I'm gonna take my 6D Mark II right here. This isn't you know, the oldest camera in the world or anything by any means. But one thing about the 6D Mark II is that it does not have a clean HDMI output. So all of this information that's up on screen you can't get a clean signal. I can actually press the info button and delete some of it or get rid of most of it, but I can't get rid of the focus box. So if I point the 6D to me, this white box is going to be around my face no matter what. If I put the lens in manual focus, then it does go away, but if I'm using a wide aperture, shallow depth of field like this 35 millimeter prime lens right here, it can be very difficult to keep me in focus and that doesn't really work super well for live streaming. But with the Canon EOS webcam utility, I can just plug a USB cable into my computer and now the camera is recognizing that it's plugged in via USB and I have autofocus turned on, but there's no box, there's no info. So if you have a camera like this that has great video autofocus, but you haven't been able to use it for streaming because you can't get a clean output, now you can. That is a huge deal. So 
This 6D Mark II, which I never thought I could use as a streaming camera, now is a really great option for streaming. My wife Heather has a Canon M50, which kind of had the same thing. Great video autofocus, but no way to get rid of that white box if you left it on with an HDMI output. But now through the webcam utility, it works no problem. So this really can breathe a lot of new life into older cameras or just cameras that might not have had a clean output for streaming, which is kind of hard to find. Most sub $1,000 cameras, even some you know $1,500 and under cameras don't have a clean HDMI output. It tends to be a more higher end feature, more higher, it tends to be a higher end feature and now you get that same functionality right here. And once you've got your camera connected with the USB cable, the camera knows that it's being used with the webcam utility, which means it's not going to automatically power off or shut down. So basically, as long as there's power running to the camera, it will stay on, whether that's battery or if you have an AC adapter. Most cameras have some kind of dedicated proprietary AC adapter that's available if you want it, or you can just run off of battery power. This does not override any kind of recording limit. So if your camera has the 30 minute recording limit and you're streaming and recording, it will still stop recording after 30 minutes, but it will stay powered on and continue streaming for as long as there's power running to it. And Canon even points out on their website, other ways to improve your video quality is with clean HDMI. And it explains that clean HDMI does offer better image quality, higher resolution capability, and just makes things look you know, better in general. But if you're using HDMI, then you need some kind of capture card. And of course that then captures more money from your credit card because it's more expensive. So now I'm sure you can see why Canon's webcam utility has been such a big deal since its release, because now why on earth would you need to spend money on something like a cam link or an ATEM mini or some other capture card? There are definitely a few reasons. So first of all, EOS webcam utility has been utilized many times as a total lifesaver for me. I still mostly use the ATEM Mini for streaming, but there have been a few times where I found myself, especially like at work or using a work computer where I don't have any kind of capture card and I don't want to use the crummy webcam, but I remember, oh, I can just install webcam utility and then I'm up and running really, really quickly and it works really well. But I do think it's important to let you know that my wife Heather, who runs webcam utility on a relatively new MacBook Pro, installed everything correctly <laughs> many times, has maybe, you know, 70% success with it, maybe 75%. Sometimes it just doesn't pick up the camera. Sometimes it just won't show up in whatever software she's using. And so it's not a super reliable source for her, but me literally just in the room next door, it's working great. So. What I would recommend is that before you rely on webcam utility for anything important, definitely download it, install it, play around with it, and make sure it's actually working with your specific setup. And the other thing, and I could just be sort of crazy here, I mean, definitely I am, but maybe not in this case, is it seems like camera autofocus works a little more slowly sometimes when using webcam utility. I don't really understand why that would be the case because still be using the camera's built-in autofocus, but I've just noticed sometimes cameras that normally have pretty fast autofocus seem like it's a little slower when they're using webcam utility. I could just be imagining it, but I swear it's a thing that's happening. And also I did mention how exciting it is to be able to use a camera like the 6D Mark II or the M50 with autofocus during live streaming which isn't something you could do before, but if your camera doesn't have a video autofocus using an older camera like the 60D or a T2i or 5D Mark III or something like that, it's not going to magically add autofocus to your camera. So if your camera already has video autofocus, you'll be able to use it with webcam utility. If not, then you'll still have to stick with manual focus. But the biggest potential downside to EOS webcam utility is its current available resolution. Right now, it only streams at 576p, which seems sort of baffling and confusing. Canon kind of claims that's a limitation of the USB functionality, but I think at this point we all know Canon is extremely conservative with what they push their equipment and their software to be able to do. So maybe if there were compatibility issues with a few camera models, they wanted to just make sure it was gonna work as reliably as possible with as many cameras as possible. So it only goes up to 576p. However, I don't think that's as big of a deal as it might seem. I know a lot of people are wanting to stream in 4K and then you're like, this is like half a K, it's a lowercase K, why am I streaming in that? 
it really doesn't look that bad. And believe me, the quality from a DSLR or a mirrorless camera versus a built-in webcam is night and day. Like I will take 576p of the 6D Mark II over 1080p of just a crummy built-in webcam any day of the week. And then when I put it into software like Ecamm Live, it still automatically upscales it to whatever resolution I have my stream set at. So using webcam utility through Ecamm, upscaled to something like 1080p or even 1440, this still looks really good. It doesn't, it doesn't look crummy or grainy or pixelated or anything, but just know you're not getting full 1080p. It definitely ain't getting 4K out of the free EOS webcam utility. So if you want to stream in 4K, that's where something like the Camlink 4K comes into play because it's really the only way to do that or another capture card that has specific 4K ability. The A10 Mini only streams in 1080, but that's fine for me. The reason I love the A10 Mini is because of how easy it makes it to combine sources. And again, remember all of these capture cards are not manufacturer specific. This isn't just for Canon or just for Sony. Any HDMI source will go into either of these things. So if you're trying to use a Canon camera and a Sony camera and a Panasonic camera, plus like an HDMI output from a console or a webcam or something, that's where the A10 mini just makes your life so much easier. And if you just want to stream in the highest resolution possible, that's where something like the cam link will really make your life a lot easier. I should mention too that webcam utility is kind of a one camera at a time situation. So you, even if your computer has four super fast USB ports, it's only gonna pick up one camera at a time. So if you wanna use multiple cameras, you'll still need another option like the ATEM Mini. And I have no idea how it would work to do this with multiple manufacturers. Like if you're using Canon EOS webcam utility and then Sony's webcam application at the same time, I don't know if that's something that's even possible to use. It sounds like it would be a total nightmare and I would just avoid it because instead of inflicting that pain on yourself, you could just buy an ATEM Mini and then you're done. So keep in mind, EOS webcam utility is really intended for, hey, you've got a Canon camera, you wanna do some streaming or some video conferencing, here, use your Canon camera instead of the terrible built-in camera of your computer. And if you're somebody who's looking to get into streaming or leveling up your video conferencing, I really recommend starting out with the webcam utility because it's gonna let you know how things work and kind of get your workflow going. And then if it's something you really wanna stick with and you have a specific reason to upgrade, then you can get you know, a Cam Link or an A10 Mini, but there's no reason to go spend that money right away if you're not totally sure this is something that you wanna do or something that's gonna work for you. So try it out for free and then see if you wanna upgrade later. And that's always my best advice is work with what you have and then upgrade as your needs become apparent because if you look at just what somebody else is using, like, oh, Tom has all this super cool stuff. I will go to his affiliate links and order all of it and then I will have it all and I will be happy. And you might not be because the stuff that I have chosen is very specific to my workflow and my needs. And so if you start out with whatever you have, use it to the best of your ability, upgrade as your needs and your preferences become more apparent over time, that's gonna give you the most customized, most efficient and most effective workflow. But if you wanna know more about live streaming and all these tips and tricks and stuff, I have put together a special playlist just full of those videos with all kinds of cool tips and tricks to make live streaming a dream. That didn't rhyme the way I wanted it to.